Hi, Gavin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. How did you get into your passion for music? Very slowly. I was. Uh, I lived in a very small town where everything was done by amateurs for each other. There was no concerts. It visited the town. So I played. I learned to play the piano, and I played the piano in the church. My uncle was an organist in the church. So it's really just a small town, people making music together. And I listened to the radio a lot, and I became very interested in jazz. And so eventually, I became a jazz player, but that was... I first started playing the double bass when I was 18, because in the small town where I lived, there was no double bass. So I didn't see a double bass until I was 18 years old. And then I started to play, and then after that, I got more and more into jazz, into improvised music. How did you build your composing interests and skills? The skills come much later. The interest <laughs> I was initially from people, I, I was interested in people like Cage, and um, American composers. And I listened to Cage, I bought music by Cage and Christian Wolff, Morton Feldman. And eventually I met Cage and worked with Cage in America. And so I was working in that sort of experimental way along with other friends in London, in England, where there was a kind of community of experimental musicians who were not part of the mainstream, who were not part of the establishment, they were very kind of independent and rather crazy. And I worked in that way for a long time and, and every time anyone suggested a project I would always say yes. And one day I was asked to write an opera and I said yes, even though I'd only seen one opera in my life. I'd never written anything for the orchestra, nothing for the human voice, nothing for the stage. The opera was going to be in ancient Greek, which I don't understand. It was going to be commissioned by the La Fenice, one of the big opera houses in the world, and I had eight months to write it. And I, I said yes, and I did it, even though it was cancelled, uh, and then eventually it was done. But I learned composing by the act of composing. So I learned how to write an opera, not by studying at a university or a conservatoire, but by actually writing. And then working with the musicians and what I always felt each time I worked with musicians I would always listen to what they tell me because a musician knows far more about his instrument than a composer does or about his, his voice and a composer can be sometimes very arrogant to think they can tell people what to do they would tell them what to do in the sense of giving them music but the people themselves they know the subtleties of technique of what works well for the instrument or their voice so each time I would do something, I would listen to what they said, if they maybe said something a little bit critical, said, you know, this violin thing is very nice, but if you put the fingers that way around, it's the same harmony, but it's easier for the hands. So I think about their hands. For a percussionist, I think, he has to play the bells there, then he has to play the marimba there. How does he get from there to there? And how does he put the sticks down there, pick them up there? So I think about his movement. And then the, then the percussionist would realize I'm not just writing music, I'm thinking of him as a person, of what his life is as he's doing it. So you develop a kind of a, a kind of social sympathy. And if they think the composer is on their side, you're more likely to get good results. So I learned technically just by writing more and more. And eventually I, I, took, I didn't have any music le study lessons at all. So I didn't go to conservatory or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I, eventually I would say that now I have complete confidence in my technique but now I'm, my life is nearly finished so it's very funny you know in a way people, most people have confidence in their technique when they're maybe 28 or 30 me maybe by the time I was 50 or so but it's okay it's okay it's okay anyhow <laughs> I plan uh, to live till I'm 150 <laughs> uh, you took part of a certain musical environment in which uh, there were a sort of community you told us and spirit of sharing among composers in the 70s, Stevie Reich, Michael Nyman, Cornelius Cardio, and others, so-called minimalistic composers. And was it meaningful, helpful, this kind of experience? Did you experience anything like that since that period? I have since, yes, but at that time, what I've uh, experience since is more working with performers than with fellow composers. There, it was a friendship between composers. When I met Philip Glass and Steve Reich for the first time in 1970, they were just beginning. They played concerts in London where there were maybe six people in the hall. And at that time, they were, they were in each other's groups, which is unthinkable now. 
And so we were all kind of struggling. We were all underground in a way. And so there was a, there was a sympathy with, between the Americans and us, and, it, and some, Euro, some Europeans too. But um, then le later, I have less contact with composers and more with performers, because after I wrote my first opera, uh, I became more, better known, because if you write an opera, your name is in the newspaper. That happens. But I was lucky that I was asked to work with two, I was commissioned by two very important quartets. One was the Arditi Quartet for String Quartet, and they were the best at the time. And also the Hilliard Ensemble for Voices, and they were certainly the best in terms of voice. So I learned a lot by being with, with them. That really speeded up my understanding. And uh, you worked also for dance and theatre. And which kind of cultural experience uh, has been for you to be involved in other artistic projects too? Well, I always, you see, as I say, I always said yes to every project, so quite a lot of that time, that means collaborating with people who are not musicians, and I enjoy very much with dance, with choreography, because every choreographer wants different things, they have different kind of demands, or if I'm working, say, in, in theatre, and I'm producing music for a stage play, then I am second to that. In an opera, it's a collaboration with the librettist, and then that's a, 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 and a stage director, so there's a very wide range of things to deal with and all those things are sharing you have to th deal with some other person's mind mm. and quite a lot of the time in the early days I was teaching in a fine art college so I would spend a lot of time with visual artists and of course they think very differently from musicians they think about ideas mm. if you talk with an artist you talk about ideas what they're doing and so on you talk about musicians you talk about money you know it's, it's the different people Ar artists are really interesting and so I enjoy that and then you're taken away from this thing of, it's, it's too easy to be a composer, just writing, writing lots of music and sending it out, but to be in the real world with real people, which is one reason why I play with my ensemble, because that's important that the public sees who it is. It's not just an orchestra and a conductor and I'm not there. I'm here, I'm playing, you know. I think it's much better. I agree. It's, <laughs> and it's also, it's now, I, I, my family start to play with me. My daughter is playing with me today. My other three children play with me and my ensemble. So, it's great. So, this is like a kind of... Uh, an extended family. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.